coach. Whenever you're ready, if you want to start with an opening statement, then we'll have questions. A uh, disappointing third quarter effort um, by our team. Uh, I expected Auburn to make a run. I was disappointed not because they made the run. I was disappointed because of our reaction towards it. You know, at some point uh, through the season, regardless of the situation, the cards that we've been dealt, we're going to need people to step up. We're going to need our seniors to step up. And I didn't feel like they did that tonight. And because of that, we couldn't have that steady pace that we needed uh, to withstand the run that they were making. And that will, that's what was disappointed. On a bright note, it's good to have CC back. Uh, but. In order for us to play well against a team like Auburn, we have to be able to withstand the pressure for 40 minutes, and and we just didn't tonight. Obviously, as you can see, about with our effort in the third quarter. Obviously, the turnovers seem to be a difference in the yeah. third quarter and throughout the game. Was it something Auburn did in the second half, or did you guys? No, I mean Auburn. First of all, Auburn av turns everybody over uh, 20 times a game, so. Uh, at least we didn't go to 21, right? We hit the average that they turn everybody over. But I felt like we turned it over because their press is not designed to turn people over as much as it's designed to wear people down mentally. And when it wore my freshman point guard down, and Crystal Allen, who is my scorer, and she just can't think about scoring, and now she has to think about bringing it up under the immense pressure, then that's when you need someone else to step up. You need a Dreek to flash the ball. You needed LaCaris. You needed CeCe. Um, you needed somebody, and nobody did it. And, and when that happens, uh, that's when you have that that wave that we went through. And, and it's unfortunate because, I mean, you look at the rest of the box score, you, you know our, tw our second quarter has been our Achilles heel. The last thing I thought was our, the third quarter we would just wear, we would just break down mentally like that. And that's something that uh, we're going to have to improve. Well, it with Crystal? Your defense uh, was pretty solid, uh, wasn't bad at all. But, um, how um, disappointed you are with the inconsistency to finish on offense? Because early in the game, I think you had a good bit of opportunity to score. And yeah. Opportunities. Well, we've never been a team that that um, scores high on offense unless we push it in transition. And um, I thought that we were a bit hesitant with pushing it in transition because uh, afraid we were being overly aware of the press. And so... It, it 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 doesn't only wear you down, you know, as far as being able to break it. It just wears you down completely. And uh, we just look exhausted at points of the game. And and so shots that we usually make, we didn't. And, I mean, but here's and, – and the performance for them at the free throw line really hurt us as well. You know, in the first half – I think they scored 27 points. Ten of those were from the free throw line. You know, that hurt us, too, as far as gaining a lead. You get what I'm saying? Like, even though we weren't scoring, I thought that our defense could have been better without the fouls to still withstand because they're not a high-powered offensive team either. With Crystal, this isn't the first game that the second half has just been offensively so much better than the first half. Yeah. What is it between the halves with her? You have to ask her. <laughs> I have no clue. Um, I have no clue. Nope. I've tried. I brought off the bench, um, and that seemed to work, so maybe I'll try that because when I brought off the bench versus Mississippi State, at least she scored in the first half. So, you know, and I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to make it seem like there was some issue I was having with her. Yeah, like I'm punishing her, but I got to try something, right, as a coach. So maybe I go back to that and see how it goes because um, – but, but still, there are other people. With that being said, right, she scored two points versus Florida in the first half, and we scored 34 at the half. Everybody else needs to do their part. I think sometimes you can, as a team, 
you can be uh, too dependent on just one player. And we know how to not be. So, you know, needed uh, some other people to step up. I thought, I thought when we didn't have that inside presence offensively, I thought that hurt us more than anything because when we can put it, get the ball inside, it creates easier shots outside. Whereas I thought that Crystal had to generate a lot of her shots um, by herself, and and we don't want that. Expanding on that inside game just a little bit, when the, when LaCaris went down early in the game, she had had a really good first mm -hmm. few minutes of the game, but when she went out, what was it that happened that made her not be as effective down the post? I don't know. I'm not sure, you know. Uh, You know, I, I, I just, I just, we need more from LaCaris. And uh, if I'm just going to be complete, look, I'm never going to blow smoke with you guys. You know, LaCaris needed to, she, we needed more from her and we just didn't get it. Um, and because of that, it hurt us. Okay. You can't play well and be depended on and then not come to play. And I can say that because she's not a freshman. She's a fifth year senior. LaCaris knows that I want to see her do well. And I just didn't think that she performed well. And, uh, you know, her energy has to be better so that she can help this team because we, the team needs her, you know, not to score so much, but that inside presence. But we also need her defensively so that she can play on the offensive end. And she wasn't giving that to us. And I thought E did a great job and CC, And that's how we were able to get back into the game because we weren't getting anything. And so, you know, when I made this switch, yeah, I, I thought we, we, we were able to hold a fort. Um, but those are, you know, multiple times I had a lot of young kids out there with a, an experienced Auburn team, and and I, I'm just going to keep saying, like from now on, and I and I had said this to my players, I need the seniors to step up, you know, like they're the ones that have been through a February before, you know, I don't need Taylor, Mimi to step up, I need my seniors to step up, they've played before, and if they don't then we won't have opportunities, and that's just simple as that. And I'm not talking about scoring. I'm talking about their energy and their effort. Coach, there was a lot of, a lot of energy on defense. Now, how do you get them to give that balance throughout the whole game on offense on both ends? Leadership. Leadership. Having a voice. It was quiet in the huddles. It was quiet on the bench. Um, that's something that, as a coach, you know, you want to find ways to have answers to that, but that's self-driven. You know, that's that's something our players have to do. And uh, unfortunately, it's like the waiting game for a coach. You have to wait until uh, someone steps up and does it. But you wait while they're on the bench. And then you put your young kids in because they're getting incredible experience uh, for the future. And obviously, as we're trying to win games this year, we're focused on that too. So when I'm not getting what I need to get from my vets, I'm going to go with my, my freshmen and I'm going to give them this experience that is going to be vital as we build this program. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.